What's up carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke and today we're here to demonstrate and test out the capabilities of the all new Monument Denali 605 Pro, a powerful and durable smart grill. This is gonna be a fun cook because I've never really cooked a whole lot on a gas grill and we're gonna load this thing up and just see how it do, baby. Have y'all ever grilled ribs? Today, we're grilling some ribs. I've been wanting to try this out on a charcoal grill just to see what was up with just flipping it kind of like a steak on some ribs, see how it turned out. We're gonna be doing that on gas today. We're gonna be grilling some chicken quarters and several other things. Uh, we're really gonna put this thing to the test see what it can do. Uh, I'm very curious. It's a huge grill, lots of capabilities, smart control, you name it. This grill's got it and we're going to be testing it all out today. So y'all stick around. Let's go ahead and get our meats seasoned up and onto the grill. Okay, so all of our proteins are prepped for the grill. It's time to fire up the Denali and get it going. Uh, we're just gonna be running this on sort of a medium low heat all the way across the board today. Everything got seasoned the same, so there's no worry about uh, cross flavor uh, contamination in the grill. It's just gonna be kind of an easy cook because like I said, I don't know exactly how this is gonna go. Uh, let's get it fired up. I think this is probably the thing that I'm gonna be the most cautious with, these ribs, because we are cooking over a live fire. I love a cook where you have to pay attention sometimes. I like my set it and forget it, but sometimes I also enjoy a, uh, you know, a tend to it type of a cook. And from my research, this is gonna cook these spare ribs in about two hours, so. Yeah, so I don't think I could have done this any better if I had wanted to as far as filling the grill up is concerned. I am gonna turn the heat down probably to one of the lower settings just because uh, we are cooking over live fire. We got heat dripping, fat dripping, and uh, I do not want to have a fire in this grill for the first time. So I'm uh, gonna run it low and slow for a little while, see how it performs. And if I feel like it's gonna be okay to up the temp just a little bit later on, we're gonna do that. Uh, but for right now, we're gonna close it up and let these ribs start to take in some heat. So everything's been on there about 10 minutes right now and we are starting to see just a little bit of rendering of the chicken fat. We're getting some drips onto those uh, heat disperser plates inside the gas grill and getting a little bit of flare ups, but nothing I'm worried about. How I'm thinking this cook's probably gonna go is that the chicken is gonna need to be flipped a good bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip the ribs every time I flip the chicken and I'm gonna be pulling all this chicken around 180 internal. And the ribs, obviously I'm cooking up to about 200, 208, somewhere in there between those marks. And we're just gonna see how it turns out. I've watched several videos of people uh, grilling ribs and doing really fast ribs. And it uh, seems like they turn out pretty good as far as tenderness is concerned. And so I thought, if I'm gonna do a first cook video on this epic Denali gas grill with the six burners and the blah, 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 all the features, I wanna do something I've never done before. I don't want it to be easy. I wanna see what this thing can do. Here in a minute, we're gonna get our first flip on the chicken, see what it looks like on the bottom side, shut it back up, go it again. 
Okay, so we're at the point in this cook where things are starting to get a little bit more interactive. We're fixing to start flipping some of this chicken. We're gonna flip the ribs, see what everything looks like. And we may just be flipping from here on out. We'll just have to see how it goes. So as of right now, I think everything's going really well. I think I was wise to run it uh, at the lowest setting across the board on a cook like this. It has a lot of fat. You gotta remember, baby, this thing's got like 72,000 BTUs or some huge number like that. And so it's capable of extreme heat. You can get this chamber up over 700 in about 10 minutes. But right now, running with the, with the uh, lid shut, low heat, uh, we are about to see a lot of that chicken skin start rendering fat. The ribs are going to start rendering fat. And so flipping is going to become much more important. If you decide to cook something like this on a gas grill, if you get you one of these monument grills, or if you've got your own gas grill and you want to cook stuff like this, just remember that if you do start having flare ups, if you do have a fire, that's the trump card with the gas grill. You can just shut off the heat source. And uh, you know that's gonna save you a lot of trouble over a, a charcoal grill or something like that where it's much harder to eliminate the heat source. So let's go ahead and uh, keep watching this food cook on. I love this window in the monument. It lets me keep a, uh, just a complete look at what's going on inside my grill without having to open it. And on big cooks like this, especially with ribs where you, you wanna kinda slowly cook the heat into the ribs, it works out really nicely. Okay, so this porcelain infrared burner right here gets a little hotter than the other burners. And so I'm periodically turning this thing on and off. It's self-igniting. And so just every once in a while, I'm turning it off because it does seem to put out a little bit more heat. Like I said, this is a constant observational, sort of very interactive type of a cook. And it's going really well. So we're going for another flip. So all of our chicken now is running up in there around the 130, 140 mark. And our little drums over here are up in the 150s. Our ribs are actually in the 140s as well. And so everything's moving along really nicely. We haven't had any big flare ups or anything like that. Just nice, consistent cooking all the way across the grid uh, with the exception of that porcelain burner, which does burn a little hotter. Cycling it on and off from time to time seems to be working just great. You know, and it's, it's only once every eight or 10 minutes. We're about 30 minutes into this cook. Okay, so almost 40 minutes into the cook and we're going into our third flip. I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting pretty excited about the way it's looking. It's really coming along nicely. Probably could have went with about two less chicken quarters on this grill. But we're going skin side down again, so we're gonna have more fat rendering. These little drums right here are just about done. The little snacky poo for the pit master. I'm loving the color. So we're getting on up there a little bit. I like it. They feel pretty tender, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I think by the time we hit 200, we're gonna be doing all right. Considering we're over live fire, cook's coming along smoothly, not too fast. Yeah, man, I'm digging it. Okay, so we're another 10 minutes in. Let's go ahead and get another flip on this barbecue. Most of my little drumlets right here are just about done. Getting up around that 170, 180 mark. Got a couple of these quarters that are getting there, some of the smaller ones. It's important to always uh, make sure that, you know, every piece is skin side up or skin side down when you put it on. Uh, that way you know which ones you flipped, which ones you hadn't. Like this little buddy right here. That's got Zach written all over it, son. <laughs> That's looking so good. We're gonna put it over here. Some of our chicken skin has taken a little bit of a beating. But uh, that's probably my fault. I didn't spray with oil and you know, it's a first cook on cast iron. And so it's just not gonna be as good as it could be after a few cooks in. We're gonna give these just a few more minutes. And then we're gonna be pulling these little appetizer. We got somebody running a jet boat out on the river. 
Ooh, that sounds good. Let's go ahead and flip these ribs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That looks great, man. That looks so good. Get on up in the 150s, 160s. So this back rack is a little bit hotter. Yeah, a little bit hotter, so we're gonna swap them up. And that's the reason I wanted to use the same seasoning on everything. You don't really get any, any problems out of it. So we will let these cook for just a few more minutes and uh, then we'll be taking some of these drums off. So some of our smaller pieces of chicken are ready to come off the grill. That just looks really good if you ask me. I got no problems with that at all. I'm gonna give these chunkier ones just a few more minutes. They're hovering around 170. All right, so we just got another flip on our ribs and the temperatures across the board are starting to regulate uh, from one rack to the other. Both of them are sitting there around that 170 mark, which means they're gonna get done around the same time. Okay, so y'all know how it goes. We got a few drumlets off the uh, grill and I wanna go ahead and give it a taste test. You know, uh, my new expression I just came up with is, uh, you know, hashtag stale cracker, but uh, while it rests, we taste test. <laughs> Let's give this baby a try. Feel extremely hot. Holy God. That's, that's spot on, man. That's spot on. That's a well deserved bite of delicious chicken right there. Because this has been more of a stressful cook. No experience on gas. Very pleased, very pleased. Obviously, you know, no smoke flavor. I considered putting a smoke tube in there, but maybe on my next cook. We're gonna do a lot of cooks on this thing coming up. You know, we'll get some smoke tubes in there and see what's going on. That's fall off the bone delicious right there. Yes, sir. Yup, yup, yup. So at this point, I'm actually gonna turn off these two far burners and I'm gonna move everything that's pretty close to being done over to the far side to keep warm while we continue to cook the large piece of chicken and finish off the ribs. We'll have one more flip on our ribs after this and then we'll sauce, set sauce, and finish. Okay, so now that everything's coming along really nicely, most of our chicken is at temp. We'll get our veggies onto the grill. We're gonna do a little bit of a rotation. Now these ribs have drawled up a little bit. They fit this away. I'm gonna flip them. Ooh, baby. And that's gonna be so far. Yes, yes, yes. Got some pull back on those bones. Getting real bendy. I'm liking this. I'm having fun. Let's get some of this healthier stuff on through the grill. <laughs> Yeah, baby, there ain't nothing wrong with that. We got it going on now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the heat just a little bit underneath my veggies. Okay, so our ribs are in the 190s now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the eyes that are underneath the ribs. Our eyes are off that are underneath our ribs and our chicken. We're just getting some inadvertent offset cooking going on there. Meanwhile, our uh, veggies are cooking over a little bit higher heat than what we cooked everything else. While the veggies are cooking, it's time to go ahead and set some sauce on these ribs. And I don't know about y'all, but I am pretty psyched about the way these have come out looking. I mean, they are really pretty. Chicken looks good. Like I said, buggered up the skin a little bit, but I should have, I put it, should have put some oil on those grates. They'd never been used before. That's all me. Get some sauce on these babies. Man, what you talking about? This is gonna be mighty fun. Y'all know what I got into that chicken. It's good, it's, it's good. Minimal flare ups, the heat deflectors on the Denali work really well. Held constant temp, runs super smooth, really easy cook. 
Anytime I did think it was getting a little bit hot, I just turned the heat down. Very easy cook. I know we're not always looking for easy, but sometimes we are. I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes easy is better. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes we look forward to that challenge. Smooth that sauce out a little bit. Well, I'm pretty impressed at how this has turned out. Ribs look world class. Vegetables cooked to perfection. Chicken, what you talking about? Get this stuff off the grill and eat something. All right, so the sauce is set, the veggies are cooked, and it's time to unload this beast right here. It's been a fun cook, but I'm ready to get into some of this food. Let's get it. I mean, if that don't make you hungry right there, I don't know if you're even capable of being hungry. I, I just don't even know. Great pull back on these bones. I'll take that right there all day. All right, so for those of you wondering if you can make high quality barbecue on a gas grill, maybe you don't like the smoky flavor. Maybe what you're looking for is just really nicely cooked ribs and chicken and steaks and gas grills just where it's at for you. Pellet grills are simplistic. Gas grills are simplistic, easy to control. That's a win right there, that's a win. Well, carnivores, you know me, this is my favorite point in any cook. It's the point where I get to uh, get into it, see how things turned out, and uh, you know, eat. Let's see what some two hours, is about what this took, about two hours, give or take. Let's see what kind of uh, barbecue this produced. Beautiful set on that sauce. Juicy rib. Nothing wrong with that at all. Let's get in there for that taste. Um, yes. Oh. Different than smoked, you know, obviously, but really good. Easy to eat. Just a little bit of tug. Nice chew. Good, clean flavor. If you're tired of smoke, I get tired of smoke sometimes. So that's why I have a grill. Now I got a gas grill. This just tastes like just the, the flavors of the rub and the sauce comes through so clean. Super easy to eat. And I'm fixing to eat a lot of this. No doubt about it. Let's try out a piece of this chicken. You know, you know how this chicken is going to be. Bone pulls right out. Get out of here. Chicken's phenomenal. Y'all like asparagus? Mmm, so good. All I got to say is too blessed to be stressed, baby. <laughs> Carnivores, if there's any uh, questions that you have that I didn't answer in this video, or if you've got any questions about this Monument Denali 605 Pro, baby, brand new to the market, y'all let me know. I'll be happy to tell you anything I can. There's a lot more features on this grill that we did not feature today that are coming up in future content. So y'all make sure to subscribe to the channel uh, so that you can see all of that when it comes out. I wanna give a big uh, thank you, shout out to Monument for sending me out this grill to test out for them. So far, super impressed, zero complaints. The Monument Denali 605 Pro, it's a powerful, durable, smart grill that's here to stay. Y'all, thanks for watching, smoke on, and I'll see you in the next video.